Well, it's Friday. It's time to get up to date on everything that happened this week with UAS. It's kind of a slow week actually this week, but I want to talk about four different things. The first one is DJI that is supposedly going to come up with a new sub 250 gram drone. So we'll talk about that. I will talk about an FAA email that I received today about weaponizing drones. No, not a good idea. And then I want to talk about a drone delivery program in North Carolina. We've talked about drone delivery in the past in this uh, in this new segment. So I want to mention that again because I think it's uh, it's a big future for aviation for for drones. And the last thing I want to talk about is a course to improve your drone flying skills. So let's get started. Let's dive right into it. Seems like I talk a lot about DJI these days, but this week they are talking again about some rumors. Now, I don't usually talk about rumors, but I thought this would be a good uh, topic of conversation, actually. By the way, I loved our conversation last week when I talked about the FAA and the, uh, the new test. Uh, I thought there were a lot of uh, good comments from everyone and a lot of involvement really, really uh, made me appreciate you, know, you guys as listeners. So uh, please keep, keep the comments coming. I've got another topic that I think is going to lead so, to some great discussions. But uh, so th this drone is rumored to be called uh, the, the Mavic Mini. Now, again, this is just a rumor for now, but uh, there's been a lot of rumors about DJI and then usually uh, there seem to be true. So um, the reason I want to talk about this is th this thing is supposed to be about the size of a DJI Spark, so fairly small. And, uh, and the specs are closer to what you'd find on the Mavic Air. Now, the, the specs as they are rumored at this point is a 12 megapixel sensor, uh, 4K at 30 frames per second, which is kind of a big deal uh, for a drone this small. And then a three axis stabilization and some obstacle sensing, I think two direction obstacle sensing from what I've seen. Now, the interesting part about this is the weight at uh, 245 gram, which is what is rumored. Now, I started thinking about this and I thought about why would DJI go into this direction? Why go into the, the very small drone category? Because if you're familiar with any of the regulation, now in terms of registration, drones under 250 grams do not have to be registered, but they still have to follow the regulation under part 107. And I checked on the FAA Reauthorization Act, the HR 302, and they also have to follow the regulation under uh, the new hobbyist regulation. So with that being said, um, I think it's kind of interesting, uh, this, uh, this 250 gram limit, which is kind of a, uh, a man-made number. There's no real reasoning behind it. Uh, but DJI, if you remember a couple, maybe a month ago, we talked about this in the news segment. DJI mentioned their new AirSense uh, program that they were going to equip all the drones after 2020 that weight more than 250 grams with this AirSense technology, which is an ADSB receiver on board of the drone. And, um, and obviously the 250 gram category would be excluded from this. So I'm not sure exactly what the reasoning is behind this. I want to know what you guys think about this and uh, what do you think a 250 gram uh, sub 250 gram drone means. A lot of people are saying it's kind of uh, revolutionary, but I, I still have my doubts about it. And uh, there was also some mention about DJI going with the, uh, the drone racing. And uh, so again, tell me what you think. Leave a comment as always, and then let's get into a discussion about this. The next piece of news that happened, it actually happened today. I get this this morning and I record these on Thursday evening. Um, the FAA sent an email about weaponizing drone, actually not weaponizing drone. And it basically said, if you're thinking of putting a gun, a bomb, firework, a flamethrower, or any other kind of dangerous item on the drone, think again. Uh, this is against the FAA Reauthorization Act under Section 363. And what it says on here is that if you are going to do something like this, you subject yourself to a $25,000 fine per violation. So kind of a big deal. Um, there has been some videos, and I think that's the reason why the FAA is re reacting to this, about uh, flamethrowers being put on drones. Now, I don't think this was in the US, the videos that I saw, um, or even putting firework on drones and chasing people around. And I think that was around the 4th of July. But again, I don't think this was in the US either. Um, 
Either way, not really that great of an idea. Uh, if you want to do this, then enroll in the military and then go ahead and use the drones that do have weapons on it. But otherwise, uh, again, I, I'm more of a, uh, a person that thinks that uh, we, we have to be careful with what we do with our drones. We have enough issues as it is with the general public that we don't need to uh, be in the news even more because of something like this. Again, just my opinion. Tell me what you think about this. Um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a really interesting issue. I know it's only a matter of time until drones are being used uh, for something that's uh, going to be pretty negative and going to give us a pretty bad press uh, as we've seen in the past in other countries. So anyway, the next thing I want to talk about is this drone delivery program in North Carolina that is set to begin. They were approved by the FA this week to do food delivery and that's in Holly Springs, North Carolina. And the company involved is called Flytrex. Flytrex is a, an Israeli company that creates a parachute system, very much like the parachute system that we've seen uh, in the past uh, from a different company, which I think is also an Israeli company. There's something going on over there with parachutes. Uh, but this company is teaming with another company, which I think is an American company called uh, Kazi Aviation Unmanned. And uh, they're going to be basically doing drone delivery. And um, the, the biggest part about this is uh, beyond line of sight approval and flight over people approval. And they've been working with the FAA to make it happen. Now, uh, the more I see these deliveries and, and the more I think to myself, is this really something that makes sense? Uh, do we want to have all these drones buzzing around and, and congesting the airspace just to go deliver a taco to someone or uh, deliver a, a cup of coffee or whatever it is that they're delivering at this stage? Um, I, I see a lot of use for this in delivering, for example, uh, medical supplies for people that need it in uh, in, uh, in 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 very fast, like uh, even having like a, a a hard delivery, for example, like they do right now with helicopters. I can totally see the uh, implementation for this, but for free delivery, I'm still on the fence. Um, tell me what you think. Change my mind if uh, if it's something that you think is going to be a revolution. It may be a revolution, may not be a good idea, but uh, it's, it looks like it's the direction in which we are going at this stage with all these approval. Now, this is all part of a test bed that the FAA has created. They created a program to test all of this. Uh, the name of it escapes me right now, but uh, it's all designed under a specific program. So again, uh, let me know what you think in the comments and uh, let's move on to the next piece of news this week, which actually involves me and the Pirate Institute. Um, I'm about to release a brand new course. I finished editing it today. Uh, this course has been a long time coming. I've, um, I've actually started designing this course in December um, and we had a happy event. We, my wife and I had a baby in December and um, and then the winter happened. Now, I live in Arizona, but I live in, in, uh, in the mountains of Arizona. So we actually did get a pretty tough winter with a lot of snow and a very extended winter where the spring was extremely short. So I haven't had a chance to actually record all these uh, all these videos that I needed to record outside. So uh, I spent the summer recording all the videos and editing the course. Now this course is designed to give you um, a great set of skills to improve your flying skills. I see a lot of people out there that are flying using pre-programmed missions and especially when we talk about videos, for example, videography and photography. Uh, I teach a class at a college uh, for drone videography and I see the, the kids, the, the students, having almost no skills to fly these uh, these drones. And so I decided to create this course, which has 50 maneuvers. And these 50 maneuvers are progressive. It starts with what I call a one star, and it goes all the way to a four star, which is the expert level. And, um, and it gets more and more complex. And it basically helps you to build your skills as you go through these. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I've been flying for a while, and even some of these maneuvers give me a hard time. Some of them I had to practice over and over again until I could master the, uh, the maneuver. And, uh, and then I went back recently and did some of the early maneuvers and realized how easy actually they were. So it actually worked. This program, and I'm not selling this because I'm, uh, I'm selling it, but this really worked at making me a much better pilot. So I'm hoping that you will uh, get the same benefit out of it if you decide to enroll in the course. Um, I spent time in the studio showing you what the video is gonna look like, what the, the maneuver is gonna look like, and then I go on the field and actually show you on the field how to fly the drone using the sticks, and I show you a video of how the sticks are moving and, and how you're gonna perform these maneuvers. So um, there's a lot of skills that are designed to be uh, improved in this thing. Uh, your depth of field judgment, for example, your division of attention, which is very important when you're gonna start flying. If, if you fly commercially or as a hobbyist, it doesn't matter. You need to be able to 
to divide your attention. Uh, coordination is a big one, obviously. You've got two hands that are using at the same time. Sometimes you're using the two sticks at the same time in two different directions for both of them, and you're using the camera at the same time. That's a, that's a five motion, I call it a five motion movement. And uh, obviously mastery of the aircraft is an, another one of those skills that you're gonna uh, master with this. So I'm actually really excited about releasing this. I spent a lot of time uh, creating the maneuvers from scratch and recording the video. So I can't wait to see what you guys uh, think about. It's supposed to be released next week on uh, pilotinstitute.com. You can go on the website right now and, uh, and see some of the courses as always. And um, this is all I have today. It's been kind of a slow week for news, not a slow week for me by any mean. Um, I've been able to, uh, to edit in the evening and, um, and, and get these courses going so, we can, uh, so I can release them to you. I've got a whole list of courses coming up in the next couple of months as well that I'll be working on. So I'm really excited to be sharing those with you. So as always, comment. You guys are great about this. Give me a like, uh, subscribe to the channel if you wanna get notification when these videos come out. And, um, and that's pretty much it for now. So you guys have a great weekend and I'll see you next week for another news update or for actually another video. I've got something planned out for next week that I wanna release. So uh, see you guys then.